95% of all UFO sightings can be immediately identified. It's the 5% that give you the willies. Whoa! Pilots chase them sometimes, but can't catch them. There are near misses between these things and commercial aircraft. And you saw the disc uh, of it. These are very hard to dismiss, the, the handful of sightings. A UFO in broad daylight near Paris. We suddenly observed a very bright red-orange object. It was oval. UFOs have interfered with missiles. I saw something that defied logic. Um objeto luminoso reported a strange craft, triangular in shape. On the triangular shaped craft. A mystery craft being seen. Dark metallic in appearance. Flying craft. There's an orange orb. Glowing orb. A glowing orb. A giant ball of light. Glowing object. Could be aliens. Hey, that's right. Last week, if you guys were here, you remember it was a rough one for Al, Kenny, and Wes. Remember that? When they were trying to, you know, get those detective jobs at Metro and Bill, it obviously didn't go through. And, and so, oh, he's a great guy. He's a great friend. He decides to cheer the guys up, you know, and let, let, let's go out for a drive and let's get our mind off of that, right? We, we didn't get those jobs. And so here's Al. He's driving along the freeway there here in Vegas. And all of a sudden, a cop pulls him over. Again, I'm sorry, Al. But uh, and he says, sir, he says to Al, he says, you're driving way too slow on the freeway. Yeah. Could you please drive a little faster? Yeah. And so Al says, well, I'm sorry, officer. I saw the sign with the 15 on it, and I assumed the speed limit was 15. Yeah, and the officer explains, no, 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 sir. And listen, the speed limit is 65. The highway is 15. All right? So the police officer, he looks in the back seat, and he sees Kenny and Wes back there, and they're shaking like leaves, man, totally freaked out. And so he says to Al driving the car, he says, excuse me, sir, what's wrong with those two? And Al replied, oh, that's because we just got off of Highway 215. Whoa. I don't know if you guys have seen a pattern here, but I think the first point's pretty obvious. Whatever you do, it's probably a risky thing to drive around with Al in Vegas. You, you know, I'm starting to see a pattern there. But, uh, but seriously, folks, how many guys would say it's obvious, man? Uh, Kenny and Wes were having the fright of their life, right? In the backseat with Al. But that's right, folks. Uh, believe it or not, did you know as bad as that is? The Bible says there's another day coming on the planet that's even creepier than driving around with Al. Sorry, Al, uh, with all due respect, uh, in the back seat there. And the Bible says that creepy day is going to begin at the rapture of the church. And the reason why it's bad, the reason why it's frightening and scary is because the Bible says for those who refuse to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, they are going to be catapulted into the seven-year tribulation. And that is not a joke. As we've been seeing, it's an outpouring of God's wrath on a wicked and rebellious planet. Jesus said in Matthew 24, it's going to be a time of greater horror than this planet has ever seen or will ever see again. And that unless God was merciful and shortened that time frame, not one human flesh would survive. As we've been seeing, hey, praise God, God loves us. He's not just a God of wrath, this now is justice, which is a good thing. As we've said week after week after week, hey, it's a good thing that God is going to put an end to the evil and suffering. All the things that people think they get away with, uh-uh. God's going to have the last word. That's good news. But he's also a God of love as well. And because he loves you and I, he gives us many, many, many warning signs to let us know when the tribulation is near and when Christ's second coming is rapidly approaching. Therefore, to keep you and I here at sunrise from experiencing the ultimate uh, bad day, uh, even worse than Al's uh, backseat uh, stuff, uh, we're going to continue our study. That's right. The final countdown. The final countdown down Oz it's a countdown anyway <laughs> that makes sense if you were there but anyway we've already seen the number 10 sign on the uh, final countdown was Jewish people that's right John's on the ball uh, the number nine sign was modern technology the number eight sign was worldwide upheaval and that's right the last six times the seventh sign was the rise of falsehood we can read that's right and what we've been seeing folks is God lovingly foretold you and I he didn't have to but he lovingly foretold you and I that when we see across the planet an increase of these false Christ, false myths, false teachings and last time even more false prophets spreading new age lies even in the church and that was via food control and population control and that's happening right now guess what that means it's God's way of saying man you like it lump it leave it or not you are living in that generation in the last days okay but that's still not all the fifth way 
The final way that I'm going to deal with, Lord willing, that new age is seducing people right under our noses, winning converts right and left, is not only with the promotion of a Hollywood mogul, the Oprah Wan Kenobi show, uh, not only with a healthy earth with the hijacking of the environmental movement, not only with a healthy body and heavenly utopia we saw last week, as creepy as that was, but it's also with this, the promotion of a heavenly host. That's right, folks. What we're going to talk about today is the lie of UFOs and Aliens, don't be me up, Scotty. Now you get it, okay? And folks, I'm here to tell you with experience that this is one of the biggest lies ever to hit the planet Earth in all of mankind's history, and it's been in the works for decades upon decades, and it's only now coming to fruition in our lifetime. But let's remind ourselves, where do these kind of lies come from, okay? N including UFOs and aliens. Open your Bibles to John chapter eight. Jesus tells us, you don't have to wonder. Where does all this deceit come from? Who's responsible for all these lies leading people away slowly but surely and subtly from Jesus? Well, that's in the book of John chapter eight. And Jesus is gonna confront the Jewish people there. Okay, and he lays it on the line. John chapter eight. We're gonna read verses 31 through 44 as we can see there. And here's what Jesus would say. And uh, John chapter eight. And uh, let's take a look at that passage there. Jesus replying there in verse 34, or 31, excuse me. He says this, to the Jews who had believed him, Jesus said, I, if you hold to my teaching, you are what? You're really my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth will what? The truth, Jesus' truth, God's truth, that's the only thing, folks, that's gonna set you free. And they answered him, well, we are Abraham's descendants. We, we've never been slaves to anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? And Jesus replied, hey, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Okay, now a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son, aha, uh -huh. Jesus. Hey, belongs to it forever. So if the son, Jesus sets you free, says it again, you're what? You're gonna be free indeed, okay? He said, I know you're Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me. Why? Because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. Ooh, and they said, well, Abraham is our father. And Jesus replied, he said, hey, listen, if, if Abraham, you were Abraham's children, then you would do the things Abraham is. As it is, you're determined to kill me. A man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things your own father does. We, we are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. And Jesus lays it on the line. Listen to this stinger. He says to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I came from God, and now I am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the who. Yeah. Woo! How many of you guys would love to have been there? Don't you just love it? Jesus cuts to the chase. You belong to the devil. Hey, which, by the way, tells you that uh, either you're serving God or you're serving who? There is no middle ground, is there? Oh, that's interesting. We don't have time for that. He says, you belong to your father, the devil. Listen to this. And you want to carry out your father, i.e. the devil's desire. He was a what? He was a murderer from the beginning and not holding uh, to the truth. For there is no truth in him. Now listen, when he lies, he speaks his native language. Why? Because Jesus says he, Satan, is a liar and he's the what? He is the father of all lies. Now listen to the ramification of that passage. Jesus says that Satan's ultimate goal is he's not only a murderer and he's been one from the beginning, but he's also a liar and the father of all lies. Not some lies, not just he lies himself. Ultimately, he is the father, the originator of all lies on the planet, right? I didn't say it, Jesus did. Now listen, that means in the context, certainly, that whatever undermines the truth about Jesus about his mission here, about what he came to do, about who he is as the son of God, and that it's only through him and his work on the cross is how we get to heaven. Whatever undermines that and leads people away, that's what Satan's all about. That's what he's talking about here, okay? He is all about lying and deceiving people specifically so they will remain his children, Satan's children, and not be set free by the truth of Jesus Christ. He is the father of all that stuff. Now, here's the point, folks, believe it or not, that's precisely what the enemy is doing with the lie of the UFO and alien movement. It's not only clearly demonic in nature, it's a last day's lie, just like Jesus said, to steer people away from the truth, okay? And the first way that we know that UFOs and aliens are clearly demonic in origin is because they lie like demons. 
okay? They lie like a demon, okay? Now, stop and think about this, especially if you were here in our study for those two weeks on evolution, okay? Now, we all know, if you think about it, the whole belief of UFOs and aliens is built upon the premise that they are supposed to be a what? This higher evolved race of intelligent beings from somewhere out there in the backside of the universe, right? That's the whole basic core premise. But wait a second, put your thinking caps on. If evolution's not true, and we saw that for two weeks in our study, and that was just a cursory study, but if evolution is not true, then how could these supposed beings ever evolve into this higher race in the first place? The whole premise is built on a lie. If evolution, as we saw, cannot take place on this planet, then logically it cannot take place on any planet, right? If evolution cannot happen here, it's not gonna happen anywhere, which means right out of the gates, folks, with this whole premise of UFOs and aliens, we're being lied to. Something doesn't add up. It's all built on a lie called evolution. In fact, it's such an obvious lie that even the secular researchers admit, this doesn't agree with evolution. Something's wrong here. Listen to what this researcher uh, stated on record. Listen to this. When I got out in 1989, we had cataloged 57 different species. Uh, you have individuals that look very much like you and myself that could walk among, among us and you wouldn't even notice the difference, except for some of the things that uh, they might be able to go ahead, even in a dark room, and touch an object and go, go ahead and identify what color that object might be. They would have a heightened sense of smell, sight, uh, hearing. Uh, the uh, situation is that you have various types of what we normally call grays. We didn't call them grays in the military, but you had at least three types of the grays. You had some that were much taller than we were. Uh, the unique thing I th uh, that I'd like to point out for the most part is that the entities that we did catalog were in fact humanoid. Now this created a situation where the scientific community was trying to figure out why that would be the case. Because you would expect that if life evolved on other planets, that they would take on some type of other uh, being, so to speak. Not necessarily look humanoid or be bi bipedal such as we are. But apparently, we got quite a few of the species out there that are humanoid in appearance. And that creates a question that yet has to be answered by science. That's kind of weird. I'll, I'll answer that question for you that science doesn't want to answer. Uh, why is it that it just so happens that these creatures, supposedly evolving all the way across the universe, they're all humanoid just like us every single time? Uh, the answer is because it's a lie. And we're being deceived. Okay? Think about it, folks. If evolution were true, and that's the quandary that he says the scientific community is in. If evolution were true, okay, and these guys were spawned from that, you would expect to get some random shape, random blob once in a while, right? If all of life supposedly came from some total random act of chance, we should get some variation in these creatures, but guess what? We don't. They all have to be humanoid just like us. I'm telling you folks, it may seem minor, but this is your first clue that something is wrong here. We are being set up for something. Even they admit it, it doesn't stack up. The whole premise of UFOs and aliens is built on a lie called evolution, okay? As we already saw in our text, who is the father of all lies on the planet? Satan, folks. That's why I wanted to open up with that text. I'm not making this up, okay? And listen, when you put this together, you realize just how dark, how deceptive, how cunning, how slowly, methodically the enemy has been working to get us to fall for this last day's lie of UFOs. Listen, he first had to get the whole world to turn away from Judeo-Christianity and to buy into the lie of evolution first, didn't he? Which means, think about it, guys. This is how evil he is. He's been working on this last day's lies for the last 150 years, starting with Charles Darwin, and it's only coming into fruition in our lifetime. Slowly, patiently, methodically, he's been setting us up for, to this last day's lie of UFOs to lead us away from Christ. He had to first get the whole planet to believe in evolution. But that was just step one. Step two is, so now that you can believe this whole premise that <gasps> these beings that you see are a higher evolved race. Do you see it? And it's just now coming to fruition. The second way that we know that UFOs are clearly demonic, they not only lie like demons, uh, hello, they teach like demons, okay? And they, they, they don't just lie, but they have to propagate those lies with 
False teachings is what they're called out there, okay? And folks, when you take a look at the teachings that are supposed to be coming from these UFOs, these space brothers, these aliens, guess what? Hey, shocker, John, wonder of wonders, they just happen to agree with 100% and promote occultic New Age teachings. Shocker, okay? Listen to these supposed messages that these beings have come all the way across the galaxy just to share with you and I, and tell me if it doesn't sound familiar exactly like New Age, okay? Here's the messages that people are, quote unquote, receiving from these entities. First of all, they've come all the way across the universe to tell us that we are little gods. Genesis chapter three, that's alive Satan in the garden, that's New Age. Really, you come all the way to the universe just to that? They, oh, that's not all. They come all the way across the universe and to teach us the earth is a living entity and we need to worship her, you know, Mother Earth. And we need to change our ways or we will be destroyed. Hey, that's like with the guy of worship environment. Really? Oh, then they say, no, no, no. Uh, Jesus, Muhammad, and Buddha all came from the ETs to assist mankind in our next step of evolution. Really? All the way across the universe just to tell us that? They come all the way across the universe just to tell us there is no such thing as sin and we do not need to be saved. All the way across the universe just to tell. What? You gotta be kidding me. Then they say, no, no, no. Orthodox Christianity's got it all wrong. You've come all the way across the universe to tell us this. Jesus' real message was to teach us that each one of us can become Christ's. All the way across the universe to teach that message, but that still is not. They say, hey, in order to contact them, you know, this higher technically advanced race, uh, we need to refrain from certain foods. Were you here last week? What did the Bible say was a teaching from demons in the last days? Well, that is, that's a whole day. Hey, I got a lot to ground to cover, John. Don't do that to me. <laughs> that's exactly what we saw last week. You come all the way across the universe just to agree with the demonic teaching in the last days, and refrain from certain foods, and practice Meditation, you know, get yourself into an altered state of consciousness. What? Okay, well, you, you, here it is. You come all the way across the universe just to teach us that mankind needs to unite into a, of all things, one world government and a one world religion in order uh, for us to keep from being destroyed. Well, that's interesting. And this has got to be the nail in the coffin. You come all the way across the universe just to tell us of all entities that the devil or Lucifer is actually a good guy and he's come to free us. These are actual messages recorded, supposedly coming from these entities. Excuse me? Look, this is pure common sense logic, okay? You come all the way across the universe just to tell me that Satan is a good guy. Now, hey, I don't profess to be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but I'm kind of thinking that's something that Satan and demons would do. How about you guys? Okay, in fact, it's so obvious, folks, that even researchers admit this. Listen to what Dr. Walter Martin said. He said, listen, the big problem is not what they are, it's who they are. He said, the key is to their theology, i.e. what they're teaching. Pay attention to it. That tells you their identity. He said, they're all saying the same thing. You come all the way across the universe and you badmouth the Bible. Not some other, quote, religious book out there, but it's all about bad mouth in the Bible. He says, in other words, it's a supernatural manifestation which Christianity calls demonic. And I love this point from John Ankerberg. He says, in light of the messages given by UFO entities, how credible is it to think that literally thousands of genuine extraterrestrials would fly millions and billions of light years just to teach New Age philosophy, deny Christianity, and support the occult? Why, why would they do this with the preponderance of such activity already occurring on this planet? And, and why would they consistently lie about things which we know are true? And why would they purposely deceive their contacts? Well, I agree, John, and I'll give you the answer. It's because they're demons. That's what demons do. They lie and they propagate false teachings just like their follower Satan, right? This is common sense, folks. Why in the world would you come all the way across the universe? And of all things... You promote the rise of the Antichrist kingdom, you support occultic New Age teachings, and you debunk only Christianity. I mean, you would think if you're a real alien, and this higher evolved technological race, much greater than us, that you would actually come here and share something we could use. You know, maybe a cure for cancer, maybe, maybe uh, some new technological device to stop the energy crisis, blah, 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 blah. But no, 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 you come all the way across the universe. Just to slam Jesus, just to slam Christianity, just to slam the Bible and promote the Antichrist kingdom. Oh yeah, and say Satan's a good guy who's come to free us. Come on, folks, what's that? That's a demon, okay? But that's still the third reason why we know UFOs are demonic in origin is because they communicate like demons. <laughs> this is wild, folks. This is, it's ludicrous, actually, okay? Now, if you were paying attention uh, to the list of teachings that we saw earlier, of all methods of contact, 
What was it that these beings are saying we need to do in order to be able to communicate with them? They say we need to abstain from certain foods, right? And we need to practice meditation. Why? Because if you're familiar with the New Age movement, which is what I came out of before I got saved, these are part of the techniques that you are encouraged to get yourself into an altered state of consciousness so that you can now get yourself into a position to communicate with the spirits out there. And folks, I tell you what, believe it or not, uh, that's exactly what they encourage us to do. They call it channeling, okay? But the Bible calls it demonic. Let's take a look at what God calls this behavior. Uh, Deuteronomy uh, chapter 18, we saw this before, verses 9 through 12, tells us about this form of communication. When you enter the land the Lord your God has given you, you do not learn to imitate the detestable ways of the nations there. Let no one be found among you who sacrifices his son or daughter in the fire, who practices divination or sorcery, interprets omens, engages in witchcraft, or casts spells, or who's a what? medium or spiritist, and that's what they do with channeling, or who consults with the dead. Anyone who does these things is what? They're blessed by God because that's acceptable. Detestable by God. What? Why? Because it's a demonic practice. As we saw, Jesus wants us to know the truth so that we can be set free. He does not want us to practice a demonic form of communication so that we will be lied to and deceived because that's what they do every single time is to lead people away from the truth. Now, here's the whole point. Wonder of wonders, can you guess just what form of communication of all forms you can pick from in the universe? It just happens to be that these beings say we have to engage in if we're going to make contact with them. It's mediumship, spiritism, demonic channeling. In fact, here's some people being contacted by UFOs in action. Let's take a look. God doesn't live outside of you. God is you. While Jay-Z Knight is among the more successful mediums, she is certainly not alone. A nearly identical doctrine is preached from a series of channelers who believe they are in communication with extraterrestrial spirits from other planets and galaxies. In the documentary, UFOs and Channeling, the late actor Telly Savalas reveals that the purpose of channeling these alien entities is entirely consistent with the purpose of the New Thought New Age movement, to change the thinking of mankind. Tonight, we're going to show you some film that may change the way you think about life. Change the way you think about life. Next, we are introduced to a woman who channels a spirit, calling itself Leah. Hello, Philip. How are you today? Very good, Leah. How are you? Very fine, thank you. So, what is it that you wanted to know? Where are you from? I'm from Venus. I don't think anybody's going to believe that uh, you or anybody else could be from Venus. Could you explain to us how you could be when everybody knows it's uninhabitable? They think it's uninhabitable because it is not inhabitable by physical life forms. We have bodies of light. While Leah rambles on with fantastical ideas, she soon compels the audience toward global unity, a message found throughout the New Age movement. And what occurs here on this planet will affect the rest of the universe. Can you, with all of your different ideas, all of your different races, come together as one planet and one people? We have dedicated millennia upon millennia to this idea. Yep. I bet you have. Satan's been working for quite some time now to get us all buy into the push for a one world planet with a one world religion and a one world economy and a one world ruler and a one world government. Wouldn't that be great? I, I, this is a side note. I have to say this. A couple weeks ago when I shared the channeling video before when we were dealing with this with the beginning point of New Age, if you recall, I had a guy from England. <laughs> he brought up a great point. You know, a British guy with the accent. He, he brought up a good point. He says, Pastor Billy, he says, why is it that all these demons that come through these people and channel and speak to them, they all have a horrible British accent? <laughs> I go, you know, I never thought of that. Of course, it would lend credence that once again, you're being lied to. He says, it's horrible. They don't even do it right from England. But anyway, but let, me, let, me, let me get this straight, okay? Let me, let me put, let's put all this together. You not only come all the way across the universe 
just to slam Jesus, just to slam Christianity, just to slam the Bible and promote uh, new age uh, occultic teachings as you just saw. But the only way I can get this supposed new and improved, higher evolved technological information that will save the planet is by using a form of communication that's demonic in the Bible forbids. What? What do you think he gets on? I mean, you would think that if you're this higher advanced civilization far across the galaxy, much more smarter and intelligent than us, that I could at least use a walkie-talkie. I mean, some of the Blackberries now are getting pretty nifty. At least you could tap into our low technology and send me a message. I mean, and why can't you send me in the mail one of those nifty uh, Kirk to Enterprise, Kirk to Enterprise devices? Why do I have to use, of all methods of communication, a demonic practice that the Bible forbids? I'll tell you why, because the Bible says this kind of behavior is going to be on the increase, especially as a sign that you are living in the last days. This is what we saw last week. This is the very first verse of that, 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1. The Spirit, the Spirit of God clearly says in the latter times, the last days, that some will abandon the faith and follow what? Deceiving spirits. You just saw a lady doing it, folks. And they're things taught by who? Demons. It's coming to pass. It's on the rise on the planet. It's a sign. We're in the last days. But that's not all, folks. The fourth reason why we know that UFOs and aliens are demonic in origin is because they travel like demons, okay? Now, I need to make a little caveat here. I'm not saying that every occurrence of a reported UFO, unidentified flying object, uh, is what I'm talking about here. I think the bulk of them, frankly, are governmental aircraft from around the world. Uh, two, I think they can be explained away by natural occurrences and things of that nature, okay? And I think a lot of them, unfortunately, are flat-out hoaxes. But there is an element that I don't think you can deny, and that's the spiritual element. But let's take a look at how uh, demons and angels travel according to the Bible, and let's see if we can see any parallels. Here's just one passage dealing with this aspect. 2 Kings chapter 6, verse 15 through 17 says this. Now, when the servant of the man of God got up and went out early the next morning, an army with horses and chariots had surrounded the city. Okay, Elijah's servant. And he said, oh my Lord, what shall we do? He started freaking out, right? If you recall the passage. And so the prophet says, no, listen, don't be afraid, okay? The prophet answered, he knew better. He said, those who are with us are what? More than those who are with them. And then Elijah prayed and says, oh, Lord, would you open his eyes that he may see, i.e. the spirit realm, what's really going on? And then the Lord opened the servant's eyes and he, oh, hey, I see it now. And he saw the hills full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elijah. Okay, in other words, he saw, it was there the whole time, he saw the angels of God, God's army was bigger than the earthly army that was coming against them, you don't need to be afraid, right? Now, that's not necessarily why I'm bringing that up, I'm bringing it up for this, this is just one of many passages in the Bible that tells us how angels travel. And we know, if you know your scripture, that demons are in the angel category, just of the fallen angel category, okay? And what we see in the Bible is that angels have the ability to appear and then disappear. They have the ability to pop on the scene and next thing you know, where'd they go? And pop right back out. They, in other words, have the ability to materialize and just dematerialize. And here's the whole point. Can anybody guess what method of travel it just happens to be that these UFO entities can do and use? It's the same thing, folks. Listen to what the uh, secular researchers are saying. After de this is secular research. After decades of research, UFO experts are saying that UFOs are not so much physical in nature as they are spiritual. And that's all based on how we see them travel. Okay, the ones that aren't hoaxes or governmental aircrafts. They say, first of all, they clock them up at speeds up, up to 15,000 miles per hour, making right turns, which would instantly destroy anything physical. You would be road pizza. You would disintegrate, okay? You can't handle that. Uh, physically, okay? Secondly, they make no sonic boom like a normal physical object does. That's another clue that they're spiritual in nature. Third, radar has never recorded the actual entering of UFOs into our atmosphere. They just pop on the scene. We don't have reports, here they come, Bob, they're coming around the moon. Yep, here they come. We've got, what's that? They're going to be here in 23 hours and 14 minutes and there is none of that. All of a sudden they just, they're there in the atmosphere. That's kind of interesting. Uh, four, these so-called aliens seem to be able to live in our atmosphere without the help of respiratory devices. Isn't that a quinky dink, if evolution is true? You just happen to always be able to breathe our air. Interesting. Uh, the five, UFOs have been fired upon by multiple governments, and uh, just both seem to go right on through. Nobody's been able to bring one down physically uh, in that means. Six, UFO entities seem to have the ability to materialize and dematerialize, as if, quote, coming from another doorway or portal 
which is what the Bible calls the spirit realm, and that's what angels and demons do. Okay, now, after decades of research of this, based on this, listen to this, folks, UFO experts are now saying this is secular researchers. They are now saying that these beings are not coming from outer space, far across the universe. They say they're coming from inner space. They're coming from another dimension, and that just happens to be what the angels and demons do. Interesting. In fact, they say there's no need to entertain this thought that they're coming from outside Earth. Listen to this. This is secular researchers, and this is Flying Saucer Review, folks. This is a secular entity. Gordon Creighton, the editor, he said, quote, There seems to be no evidence yet that any of these craft or beings originate from where? outer space, okay? Brad Steiger says, we are dealing with a multi-dimensional paraphysical phenomenon, which is largely indigenous to where? Planet Earth. And finally, Arthur C. Clarke, he says, one theory that can no longer be taken very seriously is that UFOs are what? Interstellar spaceships, i.e. that they come from outer space. We should not even entertain that idea because that's not what the secular researchers have witnessed over decades of research. Now, folks, I'm thinking that, man, if the secular researchers are saying these things are not coming from uh, outer space, but inner space, they're coming from another dimension, I'm thinking that, boy, is, is, is that a, just a nifty quinky dink that that's also how the Bible says that angels and demons can travel and they just pop in, pop out, except the Bible labels that dimension as the spirit realm. Do think that's by chance? I don't think so. It gets worse as we go. The fifth reason why we know UFOs are clearly demonic. Listen, this, this is crazy. Okay, is they possess like demons. They possess their entities. Let's take a look at a couple accounts of possession. Yes, it's real today, folks. It's not a psychological aberration. This is real. Matthew chapter 8, verse 16 through 20 and 28. Two accounts. When evening came, many who were what? Demon-possessed were brought to him, Jesus. And he, Jesus, drove out the spirits with the word, and he healed all the sick. Then later, they went to the other side of the region of the Gadarenes, and what? Here comes some more. Two demon-possessed men coming from the tombs met him, Jesus, and they were so violent that no one could pass that way. They had supernatural uh, strength, okay? And the reason why I'm bringing this up, folks, is to let us know that contrary to what our scientific evolutionary mindset would say, that not all things, folks, uh, uh, that we see with people are, quote, psychological aberrations, okay? Sometimes people are experiencing, unfortunately, full-blown demonic possession, okay? And what we saw there is one of the things that these entities, demons, like to inhabit and possess is who? People, right? It's clear. Common sense. Animals can be, some throw them into the pigs and things of that nature, but also people is happening repeatedly in the scripture. Now, here's the point. Wonder of wonders, can anybody guess what it is that UFOs and aliens just love to do with people when they come in contact with them. Uh, they want to possess them. And oftentimes they go insane. Like what happened to this guy? Let's take a look at what happened after his encounter. On the evening of October 25th, 1973, a young Pennsylvania farmer, Stephen Pulaski, and at least 15 other witnesses saw a bright object hovering over a field near them. Stephen grabbed his rifle and went to investigate. It was then that he noticed something walking along by the fence. They were hairy and long-armed, with greenish-yellow eyes, and a smell like burning rubber was present. Stephen sensed that these creatures were not friendly and fired a tracer bullet over their heads. And when they kept on coming, he fired directly at one of them. The creatures then all disappeared into the woods, and the glowing object disappeared from the field instantaneously. UFO researchers, as well as a state trooper, were called in to investigate. When they arrived, the people there told them that Stephen had been growling like an animal and flailing his arms. His own dog ran toward him, and Stephen attacked the dog. Stephen then collapsed, and after a time, began to come to his senses. The entire group commented on the nauseating, sulfur-like odor that was present. What? Nauseating? sulfur-like odor that was present. Boy, of all smells for you to appear on the scene with, it's not stale chicken. It's not an old Snickers bar. <laughs> you happen to smell like sulfur. Anybody know what the Bible says about that? That's the smell used to describe the lake of fire. But Al, I'm sure that's just a quinky dink. Maybe they need to shop at a different store to get some different uh, cologne. Folks, UFO researchers admit that when a person does have an encounter with these entities, notice that the ship just disappeared. Notice that the bullets went right through them. 
okay? When they do have an encounter with a supposed alien or UFO, they habitually recorded secular research. They usually do one of three things when it's a genuine encounter. Number one is they go deeper into the occult and new age. Hey, shocker, that's what demons do. Jesus said they're gonna lead you away from the truth. Number two, they can't take it. They commit suicide and kill themselves. Hey, that's what Satan is. He's a murderer and he's been one from the beginning. Interesting. And number three, as you just saw, oftentimes they go insane and they act like they just became demonically possessed. And folks, this is such an obvious connection that again, even the secular researchers, these are the guys who have been doing it for decades. You can't say, well, of course, Christian, you're gonna say that. This is secular research. Here's their final analysis of what they're seeing in these entities. Dr. Jacques Vallée is one of the top guys in this for decades. In fact, uh, Steven Sp uh, Spielberg's movie, Close Encounters of the Third Kind, he used him as the model for that Lacombe character guy, if you recall that movie, okay? That's how long this guy's been in it. And listen to him, he's got authority. He says, we are dealing with a yet unrealized recognized level of consciousness independent of man but closely linked to the earth i do not believe any more secular research that ufos are simply the spacecraft of some race of extraterrestrial visitors this notion is too simplistic to explain their appearance the frequency of their manifestations through recorded history and an impressive parallel can be made between ufo occupants and the popular conceptions of what demons that's secular research folks and he goes on he says the medical examination to which abductees are said to have been subjected to often accompanied by sadistic manipulation listen is reminiscent of the medieval tales of encounters with who demons he he says in fact the symbolic display seen by the abductees is identical to the type of initiations ritual or astral voyage that is embedded in the occult traditions of every culture on the planet he says thus the structure of abduction stories is identical to occult initiation rituals Oh, he's just one, guys. UFO researcher Lynn Cato said, a large part of the available UFO literature is closely linked with mysticism and the metaphysical, not science. He said it deals with subjects like mental telepathy, automatic writing, and invisible entities, as well as phenomena like poltergeist or ghost manifestations or possession. Shocker. He says, many of the UFO reports now being published in the popular press recount alleged incidences that are strikingly similar to demonic possession and psychic phenomena. Secular researcher. Dr. Pierre Guin, he's one of the eminent ones in the French uh, Council of Science uh, Research, says UFO behavior is more akin to what? Magic than it is to physics as we know it. He says the modern UFO knots and the demons of past days are probably what? Identical. And one more, John Keel, outside of Jacques Vallée, this guy's probably one of the most informed secular guys on the planet dealing with this topic. And here's what he says. He said, the manifestations and occurrences described in this imposing literature on demonology are similar, if not entirely identical to the UFO phenomena itself. The UFO manifestations seem to be, by and large, merely minor variations of the age old demonological phenomenon. Can I translate that for you? Minor variations of the age old demonological phenomenon. Okay, what he's basically saying there, folks, is they've just repackaged it for our modern technology times. It's been old-fashioned demons the whole time. They've just repackaged it, put a new spin on it, and it's not a demon. They're not here to possess you. It's an alien here to speak with you and enlighten truth to save humanity. Excuse me? Folks, I'm kind of thinking, once again, I might not be the sharpest knife in the drawer and maybe all the peas done slid out of my casserole, but uh, I'm kind of thinking if the secular researchers are saying these things, uh, I mean, are, are clearly demonic, then maybe that's exactly what they are. And we're being duped. They're demonic. The sixth reason why we know that UFOs are clearly demonic in origin is because they're rebuked like demons. Now, come on, how do you get past this one? Let's take a look at what Jesus does uh, to these entities. Let's take a look at demons and how Jesus responds with it. Mark chapter 1, verse 21, 23 through 27. Here's one account. Jesus went into the synagogue and began to teach. Now just then, a man in their synagogue who was possessed by an evil spirit, a demon, cried out. What do you want with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Isn't it interesting how they know who Jesus is? And yet people say, oh no, he was Interesting. They'll freely admit. And Jesus said, be quiet. Come out of him. And the evil spirit, the demon, shook the man violently and came out of him with a shriek. And then the people were all amazed. And they asked each other, what is this? A new teaching and with authority, he, Jesus, gives orders to the evil spirits. And they what? They obey him, of course. He's Jesus, right? 
And I bring up this text again because it's not just another passage dealing with demonic possession, but this time what I wanted to point out is obviously, in case you didn't know, here's the great news. Who is it that has power over every single demon, including Satan? Jesus, and if they even mess with you, you command them in the name of Jesus Christ to leave. Now here's the point. Can anybody guess? What <laughs> one surefire, one, not a 99% track record, the one surefire way, 100% of the time, to instantly get rid of these critters if they do come your way. Can anybody guess what that method is? When you command them in the name of Jesus Christ to leave, and they do, not point a gun at them. Get out of here. I'll shoot you with my shotgun. Not to say, don't make me serve you chicken. No. Every single time, 100% of the time, what do you do to get rid of these critters? If they do come your way, you rebuke them in the name of Jesus Christ and they leave. In fact, I want to share with you some actual examples of some people who had to do that very thing. Take a look at this. A little creepy, so be prepared. Let's take a look. First of all, this guy says this. He says there's an interesting parallel. He says, far from the abductee population, including all those with religious beliefs, there is one group of people that is notably absent. Guess who? Christians. That's right, John, Christians. He says they're Christians. Those who are often these days unflatteringly described as Christian fundamentalists. He says many people in the world claim to be a Christian. That is, they have Christian ideals or morality. They may even regard themselves as good people. But I'm talking about what are the born-again, Bible-believing Christians. It's as if the ETs tend to avoid this select group of people. This reality has been largely ignored by UFO researchers. He said Muslims, Buddhists, Jews, agnostics all seem to claim abduction experiences. And as more case studies were examined, a puzzling trend began to emerge. The so-called Christians who said they were abducted, listen, he said, uh, were people who intellectually espoused the existence of God, but did not apply it personally. In other words, they weren't really Christians. It was just Christians in name only. Right? So here's what he says. He says, there seemed to be an obvious absence of devout, Bible-believing, walk-the-walk Christians. Where were they in this equation? He said, the only one who appears to be able to stop them is Jesus. These people did it. Let's take a look. My name is Joe Jordan, and I'm the state section director for the Mutual UFO Network for Bavard County, Florida. I'm also lead field investigator. When we get a call for an investigation, we take all the information we could over the phone, and then we send investigators out, sometimes myself, sometimes other investigators working with me, and we'd follow up to do an investigation report. To these people, they were sincere, they had sincere experiences, and they were looking, a lot of them looking for help, and they felt that being that we were involved as researchers and investigators that we could be some help to them. My name is Joyce Ahrens. Um, I'm a floral designer. I was laying in the bed, my husband and I, and I was laying on my right side. And all I could see when I opened my eyes, all I could see was this red light above the window, and I could see my husband's shoulder, but I was like paralyzed. His skin looked like elephant skin. He had the big bulbous head with the big wraparound eyes. As an honest researcher, I realized that I couldn't just count these people out because there's the stuff that they had was so bizarre. Most of the researchers in the realm had said it wasn't possible to, to stop an experience. Knowing that, I called some of the leading researchers in the country. So I said, guys, I've got a very unusual case here. This man, we'll use the name Bill, and during his experience, <gasps> in fear, he calls out, Jesus, 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 or Jesus, please help me. By calling out, he abruptly stops his abduction experience. These entities can be stopped in the name and authority of Jesus Christ. Launch down in Coco, this was after I accepted Jesus Christ. They tried to come. And I kept saying, no, no, you're not doing this. And I took on the empowerment of Jesus Christ, and I stopped that. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood. These are spiritual entities. 
taking on the empowerment of Jesus Christ puts a stop to a lot of things. And he's helped me a great deal. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Let me, see, let me see if I can put this together. If it walks like a demon, talks like a demon, travels like a demon, lies like a demon, teaches like a demon, acts like a demon, possesses people like a demon, and is rebuked in the name of Jesus Christ like a demon, I'm going to think we're dealing with demons here. What do you think, Al? Hey, good answer, but that's not all. The seventh reason why. We know, folks, these things are uh, clearly demonic in origin. The final one is they deceive like demons. Okay, that's what they're all about, especially in the last days. If you recall, what was the first thing Jesus told his disciples to watch out for in the last days? Don't let anyone deceive you. Okay, and folks, I'm here to tell you of all things to come across, all the way across the universe, the one thing that you're trying to explain away just happens to be the rapture of the church. Let's take a look at that classic passage, and then we'll see what they're trying to do. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 15 through 17, according to the Lord's own word, we tell you uh, that we who are still alive, who are left to the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then, after that, we who are what? still alive and are left will be caught up or raptured together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so we will be with the Lord forever. And how many guys would say that's good news? It is. It's great news. Uh, it's one of the great hopes in the Bible that God is clear. Paul says in the context that we are not appointed unto his wrath. Paul says not once, but twice in the context there to encourage each other with these words. One day, Jesus Christ is coming back to get his church and it's called the rapture. Now, here's the point. Again, can anybody guess? You've come all the way across the galaxy and what's the number one th thing that you're working your tails off trying to explain away? You guys got it wrong when it comes to math. We have a better geometry. Don't you know if you use this device, you can create your own water and that would... The one thing that you're working desperately right now into the minds of people is to explain away the rapture of the church. And what they are telling people and what they would have you and I believe that when the planet sees millions of people disappear across the planet, it's not the hand of God coming to get his church, sparing them from his wrath, that is going to be poured out on the planet, it was the UFOs coming to save them. Here's some of their actual teachings that they're trying to get people uh, to believe. Uh, Barbara Marciniak, she's a famous New Age author and channeler, okay? And uh, in her book, Ringers of Dong, she uh, documents what she claims extraterrestrials have told her from the star system Pleiades. And listen to, of all messages, of what they're saying. They say, first of all, there will be great shiftings within humanity on this planet. It will seem that great chaos and turmoil are forming, that nations are rising against each other in war, and that earthquakes are happening more frequently. Earth is shaking itself free. A certain realignment or adjustment period is to be expected. You know, Mother Earth is cleansing herself. It's the same line. The people who what? Leave the planet during the time of earth changes do not fit here any longer, and they are stopping the harmony of the earth. You know, those nasty Christians. Okay? When the time comes that perhaps, what? 20 million people leave the planet at one time, there will be a tremendous shift in consciousness for those who are remaining, or dare I say, left behind. That's the tip of the iceberg. Uh, Channeler Thelma Terrell, she goes by her spiritual name, Tuella. Okay, she wrote a book called Project World Evacuation. And here's what she shares these entities have told her. Quote, our rescue ships will be able to come in close enough in the twinkling of an eye. Notice how they pepper it with biblical terminology. Uh, to the, set the lifting beams in operation in a moment. And all over the globe where events warrant it, this will be the method of evacuation. Mankind will be lifted, levitated, shall we say, by the beams from our smaller ships. These smaller craft will in turn taxi the persons to the larger ships overhead, higher in the atmosphere, where there is ample space and quarters and supplies for millions of people. Don't worry about your loved ones. They'll take care of them. Huh? The great evacuation will come upon the world very suddenly. And one more, folks. Uh, various youthful channels, the same message they're lying to people. Uh, they say the cataclysms are all part of purifying the earth back to its millennium. You know, Mother Earth, again, cleansing herself. Now, they said there will be many visits from the galaxies by interdimensional beings. Yeah, they are. They're spiritual. They're demons. Uh, as from the Pleiades, to assist and in some cases rescue people and take them into higher places. Those are the flying machines that you have seen coming into your galaxies that have been preparing themselves for the last 40 years. 
Some never die on this earth, they say. These missing persons have already been taken. As their time was not up and they were not meant to go through a demise, they went through a what? Not the rapture of the church. A liftoff from the UFOs. Wow. You got to put yourself in the enemy's shoes. He is a master of deceit. I mean, here you have an event that you cannot deny, right? It really happened. Millions of people all over the world have suddenly disappeared. You can't put a spin on that one. And to make it even worse, it's only and specifically only Christians. And you would think after that event, the normal re logical response for those left behind would be something like this. Oh, why didn't I listen to John? Why didn't I listen to my Christian friend or brother or sister or mother or coworker? Why didn't I listen? I've got to get right with God now. And you would think at the shock of the rapture that people in mass would get saved across the planet, right? Not anymore. This is how stinking evil the enemy is. He's been working the last 150 years, starting with the live evolution with Charles Darwin, and it's coming to fruition to his ultimate goal in these last days. Don't worry, all it's going to take, the rapture occurs, somebody gets up on the global news network, which we saw already is being built. Don't worry about your loved ones. Yes, they have disappeared. Cats out of the bag. You guys know that for many decades now, the government has been hiding this truth from you, but UFOs are real. You were right. But we were concerned about you. We had to prepare you for this event, and we want to calm your fears across the globe that, listen, your loved ones, they, they're okay. It was our UFO space brothers. They, your loved ones were not able to go into this new age of utopia that has now finally come across the planet. As you just saw in your news today, the, the Antichrist himself, or, oh, you're not supposed to know that. Uh, the, the peace has come for seven years with Israel. We are now entering a time of peace like never before. Your loved ones are okay. There's ample quarters for them in the smaller UFOs and we'll take care of them. They'll, they'll join us later as we continue to go. And in one fell swoop, that's not just an excuse. That's a brilliant one. Human natures, you'll gravitate towards any lame old excuse. Well, they just got lost in the aisle at Walmart. Okay, I'll believe that. Just to maintain sanity, right? But this one's a genius. And he's been working on it for 150 stinking years. And once again, in one fell swoop, nobody's going to connect it with God, Christianity, or the biblical rapture. And once again, thank you, Hollywood. They are actually preparing in the minds of people to help us visualize this lie. It was the UFOs that got your loved ones. Let's take a look. Stephen Hawking, astrophysicist and arguably one of the smartest people on the planet, warned us about the possibility of aliens from outer space. Hawking says that if extraterrestrials visit us, the outcome might be similar to when Columbus landed in America. In other words, it didn't turn out too well for Native Americans. Yep, I'm here to tell you, no need to be afraid. As you saw, it was the aliens, they sucked up your loved one. Or they beamed them up. Or they disappeared, whatever it is. You pay attention to Hollywood movies, they're giving us many different possibilities. But it's all the same thing. Why did your loved one disappear? It was the UFOs. And isn't that interesting, the tagline on the end of that movie as we close here, uh, was a don't look up. I don't think that's by chance. Uh, Luke 21, 28, what's been our tagline every single time? Jesus said, when you th these things take place, what do you do? You better look up. You better stand up, Christian, lift up, because your redemption is drawing near. He's all set to go to explain away the next greatest prophetic event in mankind's history called the rapture. And folks, I'm here to tell you that if you're here today and you're not a Christian, I beg you, please, don't be deceived. 
millions of people are going to disappear across the planet. And it will have nothing to do with UFOs. It is Jesus Christ coming back to get his church. And you could be one of them. If you would just cry out today and ask Jesus Christ to forgive you, you will be going. You will not be left behind. I hear a sound of a mighty rushing wind and it's closer now than it's ever been I can almost hear
Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church, and I hope you enjoyed today's study. But before you go, let me ask you one final question. Are you sure that if you were to die today, that you go to heaven and not hell? Before you answer that, let me share a couple things with you. Did you know that the Bible says that God is holy and that we are not? And the Bible also says that the wages of our sin or our unholiness is death. In other words, when we die, and it's coming for each one of us, we're all marching towards the grave at different speeds, but it's going to happen. The Bible says, therefore, since the wages of our sin is death, we deserve to die and go straight to hell and not to heaven. And that's bad enough, but to make matters worse, we don't want to admit this. God already knows. He knows uh, all of our behavior, everything, our thoughts, what we've done, what even we're going to do. He knows it all. He's gone. Even though he already knows this, we don't want to admit this. And so, out of love and mercy, God gave us something called his law, or the Ten Commandments. It's kind of like his x-ray into our heart to show us what he already knows, that he is holy and that we are not. And it's this unholiness or sin that separates us from him. Let's take a look at God's x-ray, if you will, his divine law, to show us what he already knows. The Ten Commandments, uh, the ninth one, says this, you shall not bear false witness. Okay, that's called lying. Okay, and if you've ever told a lie once, which we all have, myself included, the Bible says that makes you a liar. Okay, the, the, another commandment says you shall not steal. Okay, uh, and you might think, well, that's something that everybody does. Well, it doesn't make it right, and it demonstrates what God is trying to show us, that uh, we all have sin, and it's separating us from him. Even if you took a pencil in the third grade from somebody, if you did it without permission, that's stealing. And so now you've become a thief. The Bible says that you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. And how interesting it is and unfortunate that the only name under heaven by which men might be saved, the name Jesus Christ, has now become a common cuss word. The Bible says that God is so holy that even his name is holy. If you've taken the Lord's name in vain and used it as a cuss word or even flippantly, the Bible calls that the sin of blasphemy. And so now you become a blasphemer. The Bible says you shall not commit adultery. And Jesus says if you even look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. And finally, the Bible says uh, you shall not murder. And you might think, well, hey, I haven't done that one. Really? Well, again, the Bible says that the sin of hatred is the same as the sin of murder. The only difference is you pulled the trigger, if you will, in your heart. You wish they were dead. And in God's eyes, it's the same thing in principle. Folks, that's only just a couple of the Ten Commandments. We didn't even go through all of them. But I think you're starting to get the picture. The Bible is correct. We have all fallen short of the glory of God, myself included. And that we are separated from God as a result. And so when our time comes, we're not automatically going to heaven. We are headed for judgment. We are headed for hell. Now let me tell you the good news. The good news is that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son, Jesus Christ, to save us. Jesus Christ died on the cross. It was the death penalty of its day. He paid in full uh, the price for our sins to be forgiven. Let me give you an analogy. For instance, even today, we could see that a person could commit a crime. Uh, they, they cannot reverse it. The, the sentence has been passed. The judge has uh, slammed his gavel, and they are ushered off into their jail cell. And in this particular crime, they are going to receive the death penalty. And so they're behind bars just waiting for the time, waiting for the call for them to go and uh, receive the death penalty. But believe it or not, as we know, there is a way that a person can get off a death row. And that is if the one in authority, the governor, would grant them a pardon. Now, they didn't earn it. Uh, they certainly don't deserve it. And there's nothing they could do uh, to earn it because nothing can reverse their crime. Okay? Yet the one in authority has that ability to grant them a pardon. Well, can I tell you something? That's what God has done through Jesus Christ. The cross was the death penalty of the day. God sent his one and only son to die on the cross, to take the death penalty in our place, and that if we would just receive his pardon for all of our sins, God is willing 
to allow us to get off a of death row. He's willing to forgive us completely of all of our sins. That's the good news that I want to share with you. God loves you. The Bible says that God is not willing that anyone should perish, but everyone come to repentance. Won't you, if that's you, call upon the name of Jesus Christ right now? Won't you ask him to forgive you of your sins? The Bible says that if you confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Won't you do that now, wherever you are? Please, take God up on his amazing, loving offer. I'll let you down. Man will let you down. People will let you down. But God never will. He wants to adopt you into his forever family. He loves you. He's willing to forgive you of anything and everything you've ever done, past, present, and future. It's amazing. Please, call upon Jesus now. Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Sunrise Baptist Church. If there's anything that we can do for you, please don't hesitate to ask. Our number and information will come up here on the screen here shortly. And remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Sunrise Baptist Church. If you would like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 1780 Betty Lane, Las Vegas, Nevada, 89156. For more information, you can give us a call at 702-452-8599 or email us at bcrone at getalifemedia.com or you can visit our website at www.getalifemedia.com. Billy Crone and this ministry can also be found on Facebook and Twitter. Join us for services at www.sunriselv.com.